I don't know what the enemy is trying tonight, but the life keep cutting off. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It just cut off when um, our Metropolitan um, Bishop Ray Foster finished his word. Then it just cut off just like that. The blood of Jesus is against the enemy tonight. Hallelujah. This praise, come let us reason together. It must go forward. Hallelujah. It must go forth in the name of Jesus. The enemy can't stop this. The enemy can't stop this. Come on, somebody. I want you to share the life for those who are who are on the life so that they can come back on the life. Bless the name of Jesus. Share the life. Share the life, please. <laughs> is coming on no matter what they never try tonight we will never get burned for Metropolitan Bishop Apostle Ray Foster who had just went oh God Jesus what a word tonight the Holy Ghost spit out Heaven and earth Welcome back. Welcome back. Praise the 
my God. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Thanks for having me. And he has a powerful word for you tonight. So let's receive our apostle Ro and Carnegie in this life. Let's talk with them together. Tonight, welcome the man of God. Everyone, welcome the man of God tonight. In Jesus' name. Praise God, praise God. Good night, good night, good night, good night, Bishop. Good night, church family. Good night, saints. Uh, it's an honor to be here tonight to be on this panel discussion, this word, this platform, let's reason together. And so I want to give God praise for the church. And in the camp, I am fully blessed by your program each time. And I know it's our producer here. Don't wanna have no problem. <laughs> sure, I know my word this time around. Yes. Uh, yes. All my viewers, I can say, uh, bless you, and thank you for joining. And tonight, as we discuss this word, I trust that it will be a blessing to us. So I want to just bring that word of prayer before we go to the point tonight. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we honor God with the word, Father. There's none but you, none in earth or spirit. Lord, you are faithful in holiness and the ways of past finding out. Tonight, Lord, as we are gathered together, God, God, discussing the move of the Holy Spirit, I pray, God, that you will these lips tonight. God, whatever will be from these lips will be thus saved, the Lord. Father, I pray that the heart and I pray, God, that the Holy Spirit will come alive in us, God. Father, we thank you for the three speaker. But God, oh God, I clear the way, my God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that is present with us tonight. And Lord, for your my servant was moving at home. We pray you bless him, for you cover him. Oh God, cover his wife everything and everyone connected to him. We release your blood over this broadcast even now. We declare in the name of Jesus the victory belongs to us. And the people of God say Amen. 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 Is it important? Is it important for our church today to receive the Holy Spirit? Is it important? Now, to answer the question of tonight, is it important? I want to start off by saying this. Yes, it is important for the church today, the believers today, to receive the Holy Spirit. Yes, it is important. According to the Word of God, understand that the Holy Spirit and the operation of the Holy Spirit is vitally important in the life of every believer. You cannot be a believer. Let me make it clear. You cannot be a believer and don't have the Holy Spirit. Now, the problem that we have in the body of Christ where the Holy Spirit and the operation of the Holy Spirit is concerned. It's not that the Holy Ghost is not in the church. It's not that every believer does not have the Holy Ghost. But most believers narrow down the Holy Ghost to speaking in tongues. Now, speaking in tongues is not the Holy Ghost. Let us establish that. Yes. Speaking in tongues is an operation of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a person and not just a thing. So there's a lot of persons who tell you, I feel it in my hand, I feel it in my feet, I feel it all over me. The Holy Ghost is not a thing. The Holy Ghost is a person. And so, the Word of God said in 1 Corinthians and chapter 6, if we read from verse 1 to 13, the 
that our bodies are the temple, are the carrier, the host of the Holy Ghost. Just like demons need a place to dwell, just like demons need a house to operate in, the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, is looking for a house to dwell in. And so we need to understand that being filled with the Holy Ghost doesn't mean that you have or you're going to get more of God. But being filled with the Holy Ghost means that God is going to get more of you, the individual. Because the more we are filled with the Holy Ghost is the more we will not want to partake of the things of the world. Now, I tend to realize that in our churches, Everything we call Holy Ghost. A person screaming is not the Holy Ghost. A person kicking over the benches, turning over the chairs, that's not the Holy Ghost. My God. The Holy Ghost is the inner man. The mm -hmm. inner man. And a lot of us, we tend to mix up the Holy Ghost with the anointing. There's a big difference with the Holy Ghost and the anointing. They are two different operations, but they walk hand in hand. So if we talk about the Holy Ghost, we're talking about the inner man, the man that dwells in us. At the time of Jesus' departure, the Holy Ghost was a promise. After the day of the Pentecostal experience, the Holy Ghost was no longer a promise, but the Holy Ghost becomes a fulfillment. There's too many of us living on the banks of the Holy Ghost, so we're living on the side of the promise and not the fulfillment. The Word of God said that the Holy Ghost it is that leads us into all truth. It is the Holy Ghost that convicts. So the mere fact that we become a Christian or a believer, it is the Holy Ghost that convicts us, Lord, to God that what we're doing is wrong and that we need to be saved, we need to be rescued, we need to be delivered. Now the Holy Ghost, Lord of God, is what is missing in the life of many of us as believers. Because, man of God, there's no way that we can have the Holy Ghost and live like a devil. Hello? You can't be filled up of God, but you operate like the devil. To be told is, many of us, we have some bad paths. We've done some bad things. But when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, and the Holy Ghost begins to convict you, he changes your diet. He changes, glory to God, your appetite. You can't be a carrier of the Holy Spirit and still be possessed by demons. Because the Bible said your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost is operating inside, of us. There is no room for any other ghost. Hallelujah. So if the Holy Ghost possesses the temple, then no other spirit has any control over us. According to Acts 1, we would realize that the Holy Ghost is the authority in the life of a believer. That is why over and over we quote the scripture. When the spirit, when the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lit up a standard. But a lot of persons are there expecting that the spirit is going to come from outside and come war. No, it is the Holy Ghost inside of us that the writer is speaking about. When the enemy comes in like a flood, what is inside of us will begin to live a standard. So if the, Holy, if the enemy comes at you and only thing is inside you is bad word cursing, your bad word cursing going to live a standard. If what is inside you is gossip, it's going to live a standard. But if the Holy Holy Ghost is inside you. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Holy Ghost inside you is going to lift the standard. So instead of you cussing the bad word, you may just show the blood of Jesus. You may just say, devil, not today. Because when you open your mouth and the Holy Ghost comes out, there's a level of authority that is released in the atmosphere. There's a level of authority towards the God that, that, that summons heaven. And so when heaven is 
summons, angels will back you up. Hallelujah. The anointing on the other hand, when you speak of the anointing, the anointing is to be smeared with oil. The anointing is to be, when somebody is anointed, it means you're smeared with oil. It means, Lord to God, you are consecrated. You are set apart. There is too many people in the church of God. They don't want to be set apart. They don't want to be consecrated, but they want to carry anointed. And this is the problem I have. When you go into fasting, when you go into consecration, when you've gone through your deliverance process and God begins to use you, people tend to get jealous of you. They don't want to spend the quality time so that the Lord can pour into them. And so what they do is instead of availing themselves for God to pour into them, they become jealous of what you have. There's no need for any of us to be jealous of another person's anointing or to be jealous, glory to God, of how the Holy Ghost operates to somebody else. Hello? I love the way the Holy Ghost operates to Apostle Foster. So I may be a Pentecostal, but I go on his YouTube and I watch him over and over. And something I see about him is that he's a man that knows the word. When you see him up there, he don't just come up and just stop. His laptop is on his desk. His tablet is there. He has the scripture reference. Because a lot of folks need to understand. It's not about how eloquent we are. It's not about how much titles we have. It's not about the college you went to or the degree you have. We need the Holy Ghost to back up what we're doing. Now, before we get to speaking in tongues, there must be a conviction. Before we get to speaking in tongues, there must be a deliverance. Before we get to speaking in tongues, Lord God, the vessels must be clean. There's too many dirty vessels want God to pour his clean oil in us. We need to be cleansed before we ask for him to pour himself into us. Because God will not pour clean wine into dirty or to all white skin. It will bust up. That's why we speak in tongues today and we backslide tomorrow because we are not dealt with the all white skin. We are still operating with the all white skin. All white skin, Lord to God, it doesn't have much life in it. It is worn out. And as a believer, every now and again, just like your vehicle, when you go to a, a gas station, every now if you buy gas today, next week you're going to have to have a tap up, Lord Jesus. But too many of us were not going to the Holy Ghost for a tap up. There's too many of us operating on E, operating on empty. And when you're operating on empty, you don't have much substance. All we have is a cussle. All we have is true shades. All we have is quarreling and fighting. And everybody working against each other. But when you are filled up to the brim, Lord to God, the Holy Ghost, what we need to know, the Holy Ghost has not been given to us for us. The Bible says he gives the Holy Ghost to us for the perfecting of the saints. So what you have is not just for you. What I have is not just for me. What we have is to edify. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, he said, when we speak in tongues, it is good, but he prefers that we prophesy. These are operations of the Holy Spirit. Because when you're speaking in tongues, and let me say this, speaking in tongues means that you're speaking a language. But if you read 1 Corinthians 14, there's two operations of tongues. Paul spoke about speaking in tongues, slash that he speak about speaking in an unknown tongue. Now, when you speak in tongues, it means that you speak into the language of man. When you speak in an unknown tongue, it is a tongue that has been released already in the atmosphere. But the only college you can go for that is a Holy Ghost school room. My God, the only college or university you can go is the Holy Ghost University, the Holy Ghost College. Nobody should teach you to speak in tongues. Nobody should teach you to shanda lava shanda. The Holy Ghost is the person that comes upon us and gives us the 
utterance to speak that language. Now the Bible said when you speak in an unknown tongue, you are not talking to man, but rather you're talking to God. Uh-huh. And that's why the word of God said, if you're in a room and several people begin to speak in tongues without interpreting, you should not get offended because they are not talking to you. And if someone comes to your church and everybody in the church is saying, Shalom, 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 and they leave and say that we went to church and the people, they were mad, don't get upset because in order for them to know what you're saying, you must speak in to a language that they understand. Man of God and people who are viewing tonight, can I tell us tonight that not everybody will understand when you're speaking in tongues because in order for them to understand, they must have a connection with heaven. They must go to God, have a connection with the school room of heaven. God are the days when believers would go to church and tarry for the Holy Spirit. We get saved today and by later we are shalom and everybody become African now. So as you start preaching, as you start singing, we are now in Africa and we're speaking the African tongues and hey, I'm a shalom, no, no, no. The Bible said, Jesus told the disciples, go in Jerusalem and wait, wait. Tarry the word, the word tarry means to wait. Wait for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. May I also pause to tell us that nobody in the in the new in the old testament was ever filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible said in the old testament, the Holy Spirit came up on. So the Holy Ghost operated from without. So if a person is going to be used by God, the Holy Ghost come upon them and bam, the Holy Ghost leave after he's done. But in the New Testament, Jesus said in John, I'm going to send you another comforter. And when this comforter comes, he's going to baptize you, not just with water, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The word fire there comes from the Hebrew word which means dynamos, which means power, which means authority, which means to blast or to hit the foundation of everything. When you speak Lord to God of a dynamos power, it means that you have a Holy Ghost who's not sleeping, but you have a Holy Ghost who is active and the Holy Ghost is in full operation. Mm, glory to God. There's too many ghosts in our churches and not many ghosts are holy. Because mm. there's people speaking in tongues but their ghosts ain't holy. There's people preaching but the ghosts not holy. There's people singing in the choir but the ghost is not holy. We need the Holy Ghost because when the Holy Ghost, and that's why he is called Holy Ghost because not every ghost is holy. And the fact that he is a Holy Ghost, you cannot carry Holy Ghost and you are holy. My God, for us to carry Holy Ghost, we have to be holy. Yes, my God here, my God here. Now, why is the Holy Ghost necessary in today's church? Let me tell us some reasons. And I promise I will not be long tonight. Let me tell us some reasons why the Holy Ghost is necessary in the life of a believer. Now, the Word of God says that we are endued with power. The word endued means literally this means to be clothed or to wear a clothing of power or a covering of power. So when the Word of God says we are endued with power, this word here means that we are clothed. So when you have the Holy Ghost, even though the Holy Ghost is inside, because you can tell what a person carries by when they open their mouth. So if I carry filthiness, when I open my mouth, that's all going to come out. You know? If I carry Holy Ghost, when I open my mouth, man of God, when you're a Holy Ghost carrier, even when you don't want to be preaching, the fire said preaching, even in, in some places where you think you should just have a normal conversation, you can't just have a normal conversation because who you carry on the inside of you, if you ever start going into some stuff, he will rise up in your uh -huh, you're going down the ramp 
heart. Holy Ghost is necessary in the life of a believer because the Holy Ghost is not just a speaking in tongues. The Holy Ghost is a person. Number one, the Holy Ghost is a teacher. The Holy Ghost is a teacher. So if we're going to say, I have Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost must be able to teach us. So the Holy Ghost must teach us how to speak. Come on, the Holy Ghost must teach us how to adorn ourselves. Sometimes you put on some stuff, the Holy Ghost must tell you, no, that's wrong. Sometimes you're dressing and the Holy Ghost must say, no, nah, it's color today. When you're dressing, the Holy Ghost must say, ah, 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 take off that one. You can't be a Holy Ghost carrier and dressing like a thief, dressing like a, a prostitute. When Holy Ghost is inside of us, the Holy Ghost teaches us. You can't be a carrier of Holy Ghost and you're the best gossip in town. You can't be the carrier of the Holy Ghost and you are the best fornicator in town. You can't be a carrier of the Holy Ghost and you're the best hobby worker in town. When you carry Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost teaches us what is right and what is wrong. Oh, hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is also an intercessor. So I would like to see the believers on tonight that don't need a teacher in your life. Because if we should say tonight, man of God, we don't need a teacher, it means we know everything. My God here. My God here. It would have mean that we know everything. So because we don't know everything, we need a teacher. So the Holy Ghost is a teacher. Now the Word of God also refers to the Holy Ghost as an intercessor. An intercessor. Now, who is an intercessor? An intercessor is somebody who plead on the behalf of another. So if I'm an intercessor, it means that I am pleading your case and pleading on your behalf. That's why David said, plead my cause, O oh God. With them that strive with me, fight against those that fight against me. What was David saying? David was saying, Holy Ghost, I, if you are who you say you are, then you need to intercede on my behalf. Not just that when you talk, you will lift that standard. When the Holy Ghost lift the standard, it means that you're dressed for war. It means you are no longer in charge of the battle. For the Holy Ghost to take over and fight on your behalf. Now somebody may say, where in the scripture you find that the Holy Ghost is an intercessor? Romans 8. 26 and 27. For we are all natural minded, but the Spirit knows the heart of God. He intercedes through us. The Holy Spirit makes an intercession for us with groaning that cannot be uttered. Another reason why we need the Holy Ghost as a believer. We need the Holy Ghost because when we receive the Holy Ghost, we receive the spirit of boldness. Because no matter how shy you are, when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, you walk up in that pulpit and say, I am not a preacher. I can't preach. I can't sing. I can't pray. But when the Holy Ghost gets up inside of us, you find yourself you preach like you preach like there's no tomorrow. You sing like an archangel in heaven. The Holy Ghost gives us the spirit of boldness. The Lord said, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a soul man. You cannot be a carrier of Holy Ghost and you don't love people. You preach hate, sleep hate, you live hate. No, when we are carriers of the Holy Ghost, glory to God, we are going to love the people of God. And let me tell you, the Bible said, if you love, love covers a multitude of sin. Love doesn't endorse sin. Love doesn't promote sin. But love, love covers you in love. That if you sin, love restore you. Love put you back on track. Love will not disgrace you. Love will not scandal you. I cannot understand how some of us, even as men and women of God, say that we are the Holy Spirit and we are so scandalous. We are with our tongues are covered with rumors and scandals. We tear each other apart. We rip one another with the tongue. The Bible said in James 3, a fountain cannot spring forth 
bitter and sweet water, nor salty and fresh. It's either we, we, we are springing for sweet or we are bitter. God himself said, it's either you warm or you cold. But it has our cold. Because if you look warm, I will spit you out. When you have what it was, you're hot. Oh, Jesus. When you have what it was, you're steaming. Because when sin comes, when the enemy knocks at your door, he will not find anything to accuse us of. Oh, hallelujah. Because when the enemy comes knocking, then the Holy Ghost will lift the standard. So as believers, we need the Holy Ghost so we can walk in holiness. We need the Holy Ghost to walk in holiness in order for us to God to have a deeper dimension of who God is. We must see the Holy Ghost as a teacher, as an intercessor. And let me reframe it. As a teacher, the Holy Ghost also is a purifier. Lord Jesus, because a good teacher will not teach you how to live wrong. A good teacher will teach you to be better than them. So when we fail at, we will teach those that we're teaching to become better at it. The Holy Spirit, Lord to God, is not just a purifier, but the Holy Spirit is a clearer of revelations and of the Word of God. So the Holy Ghost gives us revelation. There's some things that you read, you will not understand it. There's some things that we read, man of God, we will not comprehend it. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we see, like, like, like Apostle Ray Pastor said, he said, when the Holy Ghost shows some things, he cannot talk. When Holy Ghost come upon you, you see what other people don't see. You hear what other people don't hear. If, if the Holy Ghost is important in the life of it, it is important that we have the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, when we have the Holy Spirit, man of God, sometimes you want to walk a certain street and you hear the Holy Ghost say, don't walk that street, turn back. If you walk there, you die. When you have the Holy Ghost, you want to eat from some people. You hear the Lord say, don't eat that food because they, they, they're wobbling and dabbling. When you have the Holy Ghost, even when you're sleeping, they can't touch you. Because while you're sleeping, Holy Ghost is warring. While you're sleeping, Holy Ghost is covering. While you're sleeping, Holy Ghost is watching. While you're sleeping, Holy Ghost is interceding. While you're going glory to God and something's ahead of you, Holy Ghost will come like your alarm. It comes like your, your panic button. It triggers off. And Holy Ghost will tell you, look here, man. Don't, 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 don't. Man of God, people of God, if a lot of times we are listening to the Holy Ghost, some of the mistakes we make, we wouldn't make them. Some of the wrong people we get in our lives, we would not take them up. Some of the situation that we find ourselves in, we would have avoided them. It is important that every believer carry the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Ghost teaches us what we don't know. Can I give you two more and close? So number one, we need the Holy Ghost because we need someone to teach us. Number two, we need the Holy Ghost because we need someone to intercede for us. Why does the Holy Ghost intercede for us? Because we flesh and blood can't go before our Holy God. Yes, we cannot go before our Holy God. So when we pray, the Holy Ghost speaks it up. Bring it to Jesus. Jesus said, I am the mediator. So the Holy Ghost is the intercessor. Jesus said, I am the mediator. A mediator is a person who stands between two persons who is in conflict and bring peace, my God, or bring result. So now the Holy Ghost interceded. He begs on our behalf. Jesus now go before God and say, look here, daddy, I know they're not worthy, but because of me, he said, whatever you do in my name, it shall be done. Anything you ask for in my name, you shall have it. So the Holy Spirit intercedes while Jesus, and to intercede for the God, also means to intercept. So the Holy Ghost is interceding. Intercept means to go against, to interrupt. 
will disturb. So the Holy Ghost will disturb people on your behalf. The Holy Ghost will disturb you, okay, man. Sometimes you broke man of God. Sometimes you may be hungry. Sometimes go to God, you stress out. You know the Holy Ghost will do. The Holy Ghost will go to Sister Kadin, Pastor Kadin, and say, Look here, your husband is at home right now. He's going to us down. You never tell her. But Holy Ghost interrupt her dear. And all of a sudden she'll stop and rush in the bathroom and bust a prayer for your bishop. Can I talk to you? When Holy Ghost is in you, Holy Ghost interrupt people's sleep. People have to wake up sometimes. Holy Ghost, give them a tree and say, Get up now. Pray for Carnegie. Pray for this person. Pray. The Holy Ghost will also interrupt. Oh, my God Almighty. The Holy Ghost will interrupt people's pocketbook. For the Lord said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Now he's seen country rubber higher. Now he's seen man and a coach higher. Now he's seen begging bread. So the Holy Spirit, when you get hungry, the Holy Holy Spirit will tell somebody else. You need to send them Western Union. You need to top up their account. You need to do it. the Holy Ghost in the scene on our behalf. Because sometimes, man of God, it's not the prayer that we pray. Because sometimes we are far from the prayer we pray. Sometimes your, your mouth is moving, but your spirit is damaged. Your spirit is hurting. And so it is important. Now we have the Holy Ghost in the church. Because when you have the Holy Ghost in the church and the church is in trouble, the Holy Ghost will intercede for the church. Because if there's some people you're waiting on to pray for you, you'll never get prayer. If there's some people you're waiting on to deliver you, you will never be delivered. You will stay bound all the days of your life. So that's why it's important. It is vitally important that we have the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer and in the church. We need the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is alive. And the word of God says he will guide us and lead us into all truth. So some of the things we are cussed over and are debate about, we don't need to. When you have the Holy Ghost, you don't have to cuss with everybody. They will throw words at you, throw shit, they will damn your spirit. But the Holy Ghost inside you say, hold your peace. Hold your peace because you know the truth. When you know the truth, the truth set you free. Oh Jesus. The Holy Ghost will guide us into all truth. John said in John 14 and 26 that the Holy Ghost is a comforter. He said, abiding, not a comforter that leaves us, but a comforter that abides. Amen. And it comforts us even in the midst of conflict. We need the Holy Ghost so that we can be comforted in the midst of conflict. May I give somebody some pointers tonight how to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Because we have some of us have the conviction but not the baptism. My God. My God. It's time that we move away from just being convicted and get the baptism. Because so many persons have the conviction of the Holy Ghost, but not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So yeah, I love the Lord. Yeah, I I I feel good support. Yeah, I'm living right, but we need the operation. So for us to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, number one, we must know that the Holy Ghost is a gift from God. It's a promise. Yes, the Holy Ghost is a promise. He's a gift from God. Acts chapter 8, verse 19 to 20, said that the Lord promised that when he leaves, the Comforter will come. Joel got a glimpse and Joel said, in the last day, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, not some flesh. That's why no matter how bad, how bad your past is, Holy Ghost can still use you. No matter if you were a gunman, a thief, a lesbian, a homosexual, you name it. Whoever you were, the Holy Ghost can clean up anybody and use anybody. Because you have some people in church believe the Holy Ghost only use who in a big hands or who have the finest robe, who wear the wrong color or the Lord Jesus. Can I, can, I, can I close here tonight? The Bible said in the last day, He works it upon all flesh, every flesh. Whether you like the person or not, black flesh, white flesh, skinny, you name it, all flesh. And man of God, you can't stop it. I cannot stop it. When God is pouring out, none of us can stop it. I have some people who want to tell God about you and tell God how much what it was to give you, where to give you, where to give you. No, we can't tell God who to pour his spirit 
any vessel that is available, hallelujah, any vessel that is available, God will pour his spirit into that vessel. And that's why, if you even know somebody sin yesterday or this morning, and you're still speaking in tongues tonight, don't judge them because God don't take forever to forgive sin. God can forgive you right now if you sin this morning. Once you repent, confess it, and turn, he can forgive you. I got here. You see the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, they brought her to Jesus to be stoned because many believers only know that the law condemns you. They only know that religious people can condemn you, but they never know that the same God that will judge you is the same God that will show mercy to you. Ah, God Almighty here. So many people tonight, you may have your stone, but I want to encourage you to drop your rock, drop your stone. He that is without sin, cast the first stone. And the Bible says, said after this woman glory to God looked around she saw all her accusers gone Jesus said go thy way and sin no more this woman went forward and she sinned no more you know why because Jesus never just left her empty handed but he gave her something glory to God that she never had even after Jesus' resurrection the Bible said he went to the disciples he said Luke 18 and he breathed upon them and said receive the Holy Ghost when Jesus Jesus breathe on them, they never start speaking tongues yet. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Nobody speaking tongues until after the death of Jesus. Hello? And Paul, who wrote the book of Acts, the great apostle Paul, he was not even a Christian while Jesus was alive. He got converted after the crucifixion of Jesus. So your, 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 your amount of years in church doesn't determine how much Holy Ghost you have. You can baptize third year, fourth year, fifth year, and still be a devil. Oh, Jesus. You can be saved from your yard and your knee. Oh, Jesus. But if I want to go into the Zion field, you could have known numbers little more. You could have known letters little more. You could have known orders little more. You can still be a, a devil, anointed devil. Hello? It is the Holy Ghost that brings conviction. It is the Holy Ghost that brings us into a place of conviction. So the Holy Ghost, he is a gift from God. Write them scriptures down if you can. Acts 8, verse 19 to 20. Secondly, the Holy Ghost is a promise. Joel 2, verse 28 to 32. God said, I'll pour my spirit upon our flesh. It was fulfilled in Acts 1, verse 4, and Acts 2, verse 38 and 39. Last thing I want to say to us, the Holy Ghost, glory to God, the Holy Ghost is important in our life to be one because it is the Holy Ghost that gives us the power unto salvation. So if Holy Ghost don't convict you, you still have a sin and feel that it is right. Let me tell you something. You will sin all the days of your life until the Holy Ghost convict you. And the reason why some of, some of us believe us sin so much, Holy Ghost not convict you. When Holy Ghost convict us, some things that you, when you look at yourself, you probably start yourself. When Holy Ghost comes because you look at yourself and wonder, what's that really me? Did I do that? Was that so horrible? Did I really commit that sinful act? The Holy Ghost is necessary in the church and in the life of the believer. It's not our dress code that qualifies us. It's not which day we worship and qualify us. Because I'm going to tell you, even right now, I was in my country the other day, and my Adventist cousins are speaking in tongues. One time it was speaking in tongues, the Adventist said, just run back. Methodists are speaking in tongues now. Baptists speaking in tongues. Presbyterians speaking in tongues. And I tell you something, get ready, Catholics will speak in tongues. Maybe even the Jehovah Witness will speak in tongues. Because it's not where we worship, which day we worship on, that qualifies us for the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is a vessel that is clean, a vessel that is ready and waiting to be used by God. Be blessed on tonight. For those of you who have not yet spoken in tongues, stop feeling bad that you don't have the Holy Ghost. But don't get comfortable. 
Yes. The God that can say I have one post and I don't have the operation. So if you don't speak in tongues, maybe tongues is not for you. Because to be told, not everybody going to speak in tongues. Read the word of God. Some going to prophesy, some just going to heal, some going to preach, some going to interpret the tongues, some going to interpret the dreams. All operations of the Holy Spirit. But it's one spirit, one Holy Ghost. One Holy Ghost. So that's why I can't be different doctrine from what the Bible said. Because it is one Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit, if you're going to be a prophet, it's the Holy Ghost that's going to give you the authority to prophesy. But let me read Acts 19, verse 6. Acts 19, verse 6 tells us it is the Holy Ghost that gives us the authority to prophesy. Acts 4, verse 31. It's the Holy Ghost that gives us power to witness. So you see how important the Holy Ghost is? Okay, you can't witness without the Holy Ghost. God, the God, twist you up. They will tie you up. They will ask you some kind of stuff. You don't have an answer to that. And you look like a fool. They say, hey, you want me to come in the church? I'm not going to follow you. Okay, you don't know the Bible. But when you have Holy Ghost, and they, they, they drill you, Holy Ghost give you boldness to witness. Holy Ghost, your power to speak in tongues. Somebody may ask tonight, how do I receive the Holy Ghost? Three ways to receive the Holy Ghost. One, receive Holy Ghost by laying on of hands. 18 and 17. Someone can lay hands on you and you receive the Holy Ghost. You can also read Acts 19 verse 6. You can read 2 Timothy 1 verse 6. How do I receive baptism of the Holy Ghost? Number two, you can receive prayer and worship. Where do you find that? Acts 2 verse 1. They were in the upper room and one of God prayer and worship brought the Holy Ghost. You can also listen to anointed messages. Acts 10, 44 and 45. Cornelius, his house, got me a prayer meeting. And a preacher stood up to preach. Right here, conviction reached Cornelius. And he got saved. And he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And he began to speak in tongues right on the spot. So you can hear a message, a sermon that will wake up the Holy Ghost inside you and give you the evidence of speaking in tongues. We can also receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost by a conversation. So Acts 10 again, verse 44 to 48. Anywhere we are, anytime, once we have the right attitude, the Holy Spirit can indwell us. Yes, God of God, give confidence. We need the Holy Ghost in this dispensation. Without the Holy Ghost, we are going to mess up. Without the Holy Ghost, we make bad slide. Without the Holy Ghost, we will live a devilish life and think we are pleasing God. But when the Holy Ghost is inside of us, with the things I used to do, I do them no more. The place I used to go, I do them no more. It is a great change since I was born. I'm a Pentecostal. You may wonder how this Pentecostal don't speak so much tongues tonight. Because the Holy Ghost, the people who speak tongues must be taught. We must be taught the operation. Because a lot of believers will think that you're not saved, you're not anointed because you don't speak in tongues. It's not the tongues that's going to take you for the resurrection. It's the Holy Ghost. That's why no matter where they are, you're creation, Bury your six feet under when that trumpet sounds. The Bible said, Those who die in the Lord praise first because it is the Holy Spirit that quickens the mortal body. So, when your Holy Ghost carrier, you're not just a mortal man, you carry the Holy Ghost, your flesh, and your spirit. That's why people can be gossiping about you and you can pick it up on your radar. You can hear it. Uh -huh. That's why they can sit up somewhere and chat down with Ghost, bring you right in the conversation. And you hear it. You, you, you see, even in church sometimes, people call discerning, prophesying. There's a big difference between discerning and prophesying. But it's the Holy Ghost that does both of them. When you prophesy, you cast them, present them, and future tell. So it's past them, present them, future tell. When you discern, it means that you're able to tell between wrong and right, between good spirit and bad spirit. So it is the Holy Ghost who is a discerner now that if somebody comes around you and goes, their words are sweet, but don't trust them. They tell you, I love you, but don't trust them. Yeah. You speak in tongues, but don't trust them. You put them in your pocket, don't go hang with them, don't put them on your program. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. So 
believer tonight, be encouraged. Be encouraged to read the scriptures we gave to you on tonight. To all the preachers who came before me tonight, all were on board. You all did an awesome job. Because every ah Jesus, every church need the Holy Ghost. Man of God, I'm a Pentecostal, but I was raised in a revival family. I was raised in a revival family. I had to go to church every week. Baptist on Sunday, revival in the week. And what is the problem I used to have in the, in the revival church? I never normally hear them say Holy Ghost. They always say message. And Brother Jeremiah, and all the people there. It's all right if Jeremiah bring a message or a messenger bring a message. But when the Bible speaks of a messenger, the Bible is really speaking of the Holy Ghost as a message. You know, so every believer, apart from having the messenger, or the maroon spirit, or the hunger spirit, or the African spirit, we need to have the Holy Ghost spirit. Because some of these people will get in trouble. We need to have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is necessary in every church. God bless you until now. God keep you. Thank you for having me. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Lord God. That, that this one is make of a lot of people. Hallelujah. I really appreciate I really appreciate so everyone that is on the phone, I just want you to stay calm. Just go back to the most part because we are here to see us and teach us what the only God has taught in his son to us tonight. So we have to get to a bathroom temple so we can give someone else the world. And so what we have done and what we are about to do, God will be able to keep us in the hands of the Savior and the Holy Spirit of God. Let this ministry bless him on my people. Let him come out from this day forward, even forevermore. Amen. Come on, somebody. I want you guys to send the love for our apostle, Lord of God, our Pope Carnegie. I want everyone to send up the love, send up some love, send up some love, send up some love for our apostle. Come on, somebody, send up some love, send up some love. Send up some love for our apostle tonight. Glory be to God. Amen. Send up the love. I, I can't see the love. I want to see some hearts also in the comment section for our for our apostle. Send up some heart for our Metropolitan. Glory to God. Send up some heart for Minister Rowe. Send up some heart for Minister Pinnock. Glory be to God on tonight. Bless the name of Jesus. God bless you, man of God. I really appreciate your profound words. Um, this was a, this was a healthy teaching tonight. And I just want to tell you that we appreciate you over on this side. And I believe the persons that are on this live really appreciate you also. Oh, glory to God for expanding on the word of God the way how you did. Bless the name of Jesus. Good night to you all. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. My, my my wife is coming on to bring greetings to you as a guest. Oh, yes. She's coming on as a guest to bring greetings to you, to bring greetings to you all. Bless the name of Jesus. What a night it was. I said the devil tried to block out the live. Hallelujah. So when, when, when Bishop Ray Foster came off the live, the devil tried to stop it. But you can't stop it tonight. The Holy Ghost is moving and you can't stop it. The fire is burning and you can't stop it. Because someone needed to hear, oh glory to God, these powerful words tonight. Hallelujah. And this powerful teaching. And the man of God break it down, all the way down. He break it down tonight. He came down to our level. He teach us. And we just want to tell him thanks in a million. I thank you so much, my Apostle, bless the name of Jesus. You know you can always call on me anytime. Bless the name of the Lord because we are our brother's keeper. Glory be to God. Amen. On tonight, my 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 wife is coming on. Glory to God. She's coming in. She's coming in. She's coming in. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, somebody, just give God some praise. While she's coming, give God some praise. May be rough, and my sheep may be tossed. I find shelter in the eye of my son. Though my road may be rough, and my sheep may be tossed, I find shelter. What a night it was. What a night. Maybe oh. my in the eye of my Pastor Kadeen Campbell is coming on right now. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Campbell, Pastor Campbell, Greetings. your congregation in Jesus' name. They are waiting for you. Glory to God. The floor is yours. Greetings, greetings to each and everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. First, I want to thank God for keeping me alive so I can live to see this beautiful and wonderful day, which we will never see again. So therefore, I have to give God thanks and give him all the honor. Then to my loving husband, Bishop Shane Campbell, the leader of the Rare Water Well of Living Water Ministry, located here in canada and to all our members who is online and then to our speaker that came for tonight bless the name of jesus they did a wonderful job hallelujah thank you jesus we have bless god our minister pinup that was online we have bless the name of jesus our uh, metropolitan bless god online tonight Bless God, you guys did a wonderful job. Minister Rowe, Apostle, you know, Carnegie, you guys did a wonderful job. I hope I didn't leave out anyone. And I thank everyone for tuning on live with us all the time and supporting us. We love you. And without, you know, without all of us, this wouldn't be, you know, successful tonight. Bless the name of Jesus. Iron sharpness iron and the countenance of one brightness another bless the name of jesus oh god i'm so thankful to be a part of the family of god tonight Amen. and the theme says does the church still need to receive the holy ghost the answer is yes hallelujah you see without the holy ghost we can't make it on our own 
the Holy Ghost will teach us and guide us. Bless the name of Jesus. We need it minutely, hourly, because we, we in our flesh, we have to die daily. And once the power, the Holy Ghost does take over our body, Almighty God, we will be in places that will feel so uncomfortable. But when the Holy Spirit, you know, stepped over and activate inside of us, he makes our, you know, our heart be open okay with our very enemy it makes us walk up into some place and we feel so you know worried that we won't get the job but when the holy spirit activate inside of us we feel empowered we get the right words to say the holy spirit qualifies us for what we normal we normal mere human being don't qualify for when the holy spirit activate inside of us we will show up at an interview and feeling so oh my god i won't get the job because i don't have 10 subjects i don't have all of these qualifications but the holy spirit walks up inside of you oh my god you, you put your words so eloquently that the boss when the boss looks on you not even the resume the boss will touch right there and then you get hired bless god you see when we have the holy spirit it teaches us all you know to to walk to talk and to act like christ bless the name of jesus you see anything of eternal value in this life and in eternity must come through the work of the holy spirit in us what does the holy spirit do anything of eternal things whatever we are trying to do on this earth once we want to align it with god the holy spirit must be in our presence bless the name of jesus if Amen. we do it of our own we are doing it ourselves and when we do things ourselves we can't praise god we need to activate that spirit inside of us bless the name of jesus hallelujah and you know the holy spirit when it comes up in our life everything is different the way how we act, the way how we talk, the way how we deal with each other. When the Holy Spirit lives and dwells inside of us, we operate with humbleness, with meekness, with loving, with long suffering, with forgiveness. Bless the name of Jesus. Uh, you see, as followers of Jesus Christ, you see, if you don't have the Holy Spirit with you, Almighty God, we see how many of time the Spirit wasn't with the disciples that it would push people away but because God Jesus Christ whom he is the spirit bless God he will teach them so listen now you know I am with you I am the truth the way the light you see I am the spirit bless God and when you're walking with me you can't operate like this I come to save the lost sheep but you know when they didn't have the spirit at the, the time they would act our flesh and that's how we normal human act when we are in the flesh we think fleshly things and that's why the spirit has to sit on top of us and say listen to me you girl don't go down that road don't don't curse on the road don't go in that company the only spirit come and bring discernment the only spirit speak in our ears and say young man put on the gun the only spirit speak to us and say young lady walk on the other side and the only spirit reveal these things to you in your in your mind you will see things happen before you say oh my god that's what the spirit of god was telling me not to go there because there was something there the spirit you see the spirit needs a body to dwell in and that's why the, 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 the scripture said we have to present our bodies as a living sacrifice only only and acceptable what yes. we think is acceptable is not acceptable. What is acceptable unto the Lord? Our body has to be acceptable, adorn. Christian that want to have the Holy Spirit have to adorn ourselves. We have to look like Christian. We have to be set apart. So the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we can't dress up so nice. We can look so nice and sing the best song, but if the Holy Spirit don't sit on top of us and sit in our heart, the moment a sister pass by and even brush on us, the Spirit of God, if it's not inside of you, you don't know how to calm yourself. It's okay. That's all right. And even embrace the person. But when you don't have the spirit inside of you, there's an evil spirit that will stir up some anger inside of you. I say, listen, you push me. I'm going to push you back. Oh, my God. Bless the name of Jesus.
My so God. You see, we need the Spirit of God in our lives. Hallelujah. Acts 5, verse 32, talk about it. You see, once we become disciples and have received the Holy Spirit, we begun, we will begin to walk in Him. We will begin, begin to transform ourselves into the image of Christ. And that's why we as Christians have to strive to be like Christ. The song man said, I love to be like Jesus. The Father, there's only child. Said I love to be like Jesus. Said the Father's only child. You see, we have to put our mind at the place so God can dwell inside of us. Bless God. God wants to use us. And when, when God's spirit come on top of us, he will give us power. But we have to know how we're going to receive that power. Bless God. Hallelujah. Because so many a time we are wrestling with the flesh and wrestling with the spirit of God. When we are in some companies and we see pure bad things going on around us, we know how to really stand flat-footed and make the spirit of God talk to us and say, listen to me now. You have to get out of this company. But if you give over to the mortal body you will find that you will always be in the mess always going back to the rum bar but when the spirit of god is instead of you speaking and you give him you know you have to give in to the spirit i don't want to quench the spirit no matter how the spirit that talk to us we will never move we become stiff naked and we ears block up when no one accept what the holy spirit is in and back in the days i'm not talking no talking about back in the days when Spirit a whip some of we. We can't even sit down for we foot. We can't even sit down for a jump up and do just set the Lord. I remember nights when I was growing up. Bless the name of Jesus. My father would be in his bed. And when the Holy Spirit come, Almighty God, my father would wake up all of us. Bless God, Lisa, to pray and cry out to God. Oh God, I remember one night my sister said, Daddy, show me the man. Show me the man. And the Spirit of God was just operating upon my father. Bless God, I long for those days, mighty God, when I see people would just get up and do just set the Lord, don't quench the spirit. Oh God, when the spirit of God come, I say, go lift the vase, lift the vase. And the spirit of God say, go and spin that sister. You go and spin. You know, you have to operate in the spirit of God can elevate it. It's through the spirit we can grow. And if we're not growing in the spirit of God, oh God, it will spew us out. We are good for nothing. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, what is this power from the Holy Spirit? Paul testified that it is, it was his earnest expectation and hope by life or death, Jesus would be magnified in his body. Bless God. Ah, what greater task does the Holy Spirit have than to empower his disciples to be transformed into the likeness of Jesus? And that is love will be manifest through us because we bear the mark of Christ and when we as Christians bear the mark of Christ we can't operate as all we would want to there are things we want to say but when the spirit of God is dwelling inside of us we make we humble our peace sometimes the spirit of God will give us our right bless God just for peace sake that is how the spirit of God operates Almighty God, I remember when the woman came to him, he said, listen, my bread is not for you. My bread is not for you, but because he know that he is a God and he never fears and he can't go back from his word, he give the bread to the woman. You see, what the law couldn't have done for us, grace did it for us. And you see, because Jesus Christ know that, oh God, we as people, we can't go under the law. So what he did, he said, God, I have to go. And I have to be a lamb for these people. Oh God, because they are so messed up on our sins. Worse like crimson, oh God. When he came on this earth, he became the partition for us. He gave us grace. Oh God, he put an agape love for us. And he said, where I go, I will prepare a place for you. So therefore, when I come, I can dwell with you in your body. Mm. That's why he went on the cross. 
wildness. So one thing he can't go back on his word. So he said, I have to prepare now a body. I have to prepare a body so I can walk in and be like normal human being. So what he did, he present now the spirit upon Mary because he can't operate as such. Illegal. In a, in a legal place. This earth is legal. But for him to come down, he will dwell illegally. So what he did, he borrowed, oh God, Mary as an incubator. And when he go inside of Mary, he said, okay, I can dwell in you. And at that time, we knew that Mary, oh God, was a virgin, oh God, set apart, ready to be given over to her expected husband. But when the spirit of God come up on that hour, oh God, and impute inside of her, bless God. And when she was pregnant, almighty God, with the Holy Ghost inside of her, oh God, the Bible tell me that when she went to meet Elizabeth, oh God, the baby inside her belly, oh God, activate the next baby inside of Elizabeth, baby, the Holy Ghost, oh God, start to move inside of Elizabeth, they start to move up and down, what a joyous time, when spirit meet upon spirit, oh God, when grace meet upon grace, oh mighty God, and the woman start to jump for joy, the baby start to leap up when you have a gift inside of you the holy spirit will come and activate the gift inside of you elizabeth noah start to jump for joy because she said yes a king is coming to save this world oh god joy to the world oh god i see that is coming one oh god who oh john wasn't worthy to even launch his foot oh god his slippers one who will wash away our crimson stains. One who will look behind our fault and start our condition. One who will send the Holy Spirit to go inside the jail cell and activate young man to turn from their wicked ways. One spirit that will show up in the courthouse. And when the judge looked on your son, the judge said, Oh God, I should have given you life. But because the spirit that is inside of me. I go give him, oh God, five months. You see, when the Spirit of God show up in your life, what you thought, oh God, was bad. The Spirit of God turn it around. When you go, oh God, to the doctor and your blood pressure rise up. When the Spirit of God show up into the hospital, the doctor will say, I don't know what happened, but this morning when I looked at you, your blood pressure was high. Or something, something got a hold of you. Something changed your blood pressure. Something changed. When you go to the doctor, the tumor was right there. But when the Holy Spirit come and activate in your body, Almighty God, the tumor is nowhere to be found. The doctor would say, Oh God, the MRI is showing a tumor. Oh God, this morning. But when the Holy Spirit show up, I can't see no tumor, dear. Oh Almighty God, I bring the blood test to the doctor. To oh God, the head nurse, and they see that there is a tumor there. But no, when we come and I call the man of his high chair to come and give you a diagnosis that you have cancer, there is no cancer there. Oh my God, when the anointing show up in your life, there must be a change. Oh my God, the son man said, He owned me for his child. I can no longer fear when the spirit of God show up in your your life you have no fear you walk up big but and bull as giant and you said oh god self cannot do this oh mighty god i have to have the savior with me for i dare not walk alone i must feel his presence near me and his arms around me thrown bless the name of jesus there was a time oh mighty god when moses went 
And he said, you know what? I'm going to go for the children of Israel. Almighty God, when he went down there, you know, fear was in his heart. He said, God, what should I say to these people? Oh, God, God said, just go. I will give you the word. I said, just go. Like, God said, yes, go. I will tell you what to say. Tell that the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, the God of your four parents, oh, God, they will, they will know because my spirit will show up inside of you and the spirit will be with them. He said, okay, that's okay. When Moses, oh God, got the people of Israel and they were going out in a joyous time, oh God, they looked behind. Almighty God, fear was coming with his army and Almighty God started to feel fear inside of them. Almighty God said, oh God, oh God, Moses, it would have been better for you to leave us back in Egypt. Almighty God, let us die there. But Moses, you know, started to talk to God and God said, stand still. Almighty God, believers, stand still. Oh God, because when the power come upon you, I'm going to show you that I am the I am. I am the kings of kings, the Lord of Lord, the conquering land in the tribe of Judah. And when he spoke to Moses, he said, Moses, what is in your hand? I want you to use it today. The spirit of God come upon Moses in order for him to stretch forth the rudder. It must be the spirit that activates something inside of him. That wouldn't be mere mortal flesh. It had to be the spirit, oh God, for him to spark the water. But God knew he couldn't operate illegally. So what he did, he said, Moses, just stand up. And I, God, will lead from heaven. And I will come down through you. And I'm going to work in you. I'm going to be the man inside of you. The spirit will dwell in you and give it that power to stretch out your hands and the water will part with the rod and Moses. He didn't know that he could have part the Red Sea. I know you could perform certain things, Moses, but this one, you have to be the spirit of God. Activate inside of you. The Bible tells me that when he put forth his hands, almighty God, there was a Red Sea in front of them. And imagine to have something red in front of you. You can't see. You can't see. Uh, but when the, the Bible tells me that when Moses stretched forth his hands, there was a power, there was an anointing, there was a spirit there. The people that was fearing, oh my God, when they see that the water, oh God, went on both sides and become war. No, we are talking about a true and living God. We are talking about a true spirit. Oh my God, the Bible tells me now that when they began to walk, what seen that there were water in front of them become dry land. When God start to activate in your life, what seen in Possible. God will make it possible. Oh God, what seems so hard for people to do in your life, when God show up, He will make it possible in your life. The people of God, they start to walk and dry ground, going over, shouting for joy. And when the Israelites now come, oh mighty God, they start to come. And the Bible tells me that, oh God, the father of all oh God, of Abraham, of Isaac, he just wash them away in the Red Sea. What a mighty God we serve. He rained upon the land. He rained upon the sea. What a mighty God we serve. It's the people of God. When you walk in alignment with God, you know, fear no foe. He said, I will be with you. I will be a rod your staff. I will comfort you. I will be a mother to the motherless. A father to the fatherless. No matter where you're gone, oh God, you could make your bed in hell. Who wants to give your life to God? He will come down and snatch you from the hands, oh God, of the devil. He said, I'm going up. I stop right here. When I was going up, I make a little detour. And I went down there. I said, oh God, oh Jezebel, oh Satan, oh Sambalat, I come to you this day. I'm going to take the keys of life and death. I'm going to bring it up back to my father. Because in my father's house, there are many mansions. And he 
if it were not so, I wouldn't tell you that my disciples, people of God, serve him right, walk in his alignment, be happy with God, don't let nobody spoil your joy, when you're feeling down, cry out to Jesus, the woman who's at the well, seeking for things, oh God almighty, I don't want to go there tonight, I don't want to go there tonight, the spirit of God activate inside of her, what she went there to do, oh God almighty, have you ever went to crusade with your friend, I just say, oh yes, I'm going to just finish the night, and something got a hold of you, you go there, you look so nice, your hair will tie up nice, oh God, your blows look so nice, mighty God, and when the pastor just said, there's a fire, put up in my bone, you start to say, friend, you feel that, and you feel that, friends say, no, I don't feel that, it's, it's a no, friend, you feel that, friends say, no, me no feel that, it's a no, man, took the tingle on the inside, friends say, I can't feel it, you say, friend, I feel like a fire, oh, mighty God, shut up in my bone, your friends say, I can't feel it, it's a friend, have you ever feel a pain in your tooth, Oh, God, your friends say, no, I can't see the pain. I can't feel it. It feel like a pain. Oh, God, leave my body. It feel like everything leave my body. I'm running for my life. I found a new king, a new savior. It's a friend. Place I used to go. We will go there no more. Things I used to do. Let's do them no more, friend. Oh, God. Words. We used to say, we're going to say them no more. Friend said, what is going on? What is going on? Oh, God, she said, no. You know, understand. There is a bubble. There is a fire inside of me, friend. So, friend said, Lord, have mercy. I want to know what my friend is going through. The spirit of God, no. Start to act it. Almighty oh, God start to activate and both of them. They start to run for them life. Too soon to give over oh God to God. That's what we're talking about. When you show up at church and you want deliverance, make yourself available. Almighty oh, God, when they were in the upper room, it must be that they were on one accord for the spirit of God to show up. Oh God, to give everybody the tongues. You can't see it in the church. I you not singing as one accord. You can't see in the oh God the house. You're not talking with your husband on one accord. The spirit of God must give it that love inside of you that you can speak. Oh God, together you can walk together. Mighty God of Daniel, listen to me, people of God. When you give your life over to God, I am not saying it's gonna be an easy road. What I'm trying to say to you, when the spirit of God show up in your life, he will activate you in such a way that if you're the only one in your family, almighty God, that believe that there's a king of kings, that spirit inside of you will transform everybody in your family. Amen. So tonight, people of God, don't be dismayed by what is going on inside of you. We might look crazy that we have on our wraps and everything, but don't worry, it's in the Bible. Oh yes, the prophets wrap their head. Jesus Christ wrap his head. She said, don't, don't get carried away if you see our oh, tired, you know? People run away and say, oh, they're poor coming. No, we serve God, all right. We are done, our oh, seven people are God. We don't want God to activate in your life. Set yourself apart. If you want God to come in, God don't dwell in a dirty vessel. In order for the spirit of God to come in your life, you have to meet God at that place. Come out of where you're in and go in a God. Don't stay in the world because there's nothing out there in the world. You're young, you're beautiful. I know, yes, you want to have the best of best, but God said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, God don't lie. I didn't never go upon his word. So tonight, let the spirit of God come in your house. I know somebody on the life tonight. You feel like there is no peace in your own. But I charge, I charge you tonight. Activate the spirit of God in your life. And you will see a difference. Thank you guys for listening. 
thank to our bishop, you know, for getting such a powerful team. Does the church still need to receive the Holy Ghost? Yes, minutely, hourly, daily. Bless God. So tonight, have yourself a blessed night. Bishop, continue to hold on to Christ. Don't let go. No matter what is happening, no matter how dark the road may be, I always encourage you to hold on to Christ. Don't look at what is happening in front of you. Focus. Keep your mind focused on the prize. God bless you guys tonight, and I pray that you all have a peace and safe night. Amen. Go on, somebody put your hands together for our Pastor Campbell. Hallelujah, Ood. Um, get carried away in the spirit. <laughs> I just said you carried away. You know what? Let me tell you something. You see, when you start to embark upon the word of God, and when you start to speak the word of God, and uh, the anointing start to come upon you, it's like you can't control yourself. You got to just speak and just speak and just speak and just speak till the uh, Till the Holy Ghost finish with you. Glory to God. And sometimes and sometime I always say that she have that inside of her. Anytime she touch the floor and that spirit begin to move upon her, trust me, it's a total different person you're seeing. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, Pastor Campbell. Put your hands together for our Pastor, Pastor Campbell. Just want to say that we love you all. God bless you all. Thank you all for tuning in. Glory be to God. I will see you all next week, Monday. Oh, God, it's going to be another powerful night. So I'll see you all next week, Monday. I pray that the blessings of God will be up on you. Oh, God, and that someone that is watching this live, you can be saved. Hallelujah. You can come to know Christ, whom to know is life eternal. Let me tell you something. Know Jesus for yourself. Get to know him. Oh, get to wrap up in Jesus. Get to get tangled up in him. I want everybody that is on this life to reach out. If you're not saved and you need to get saved, run to Jesus. Hallelujah. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. And when you get saved, I want you to inbox me message me let me know that yes bishop i did it i did it i did it i i give my life completely to god bless the name of jesus i am your host bishop campbell i pray tonight that god will have his own way in your life i come against every sickness that is not because sickness is not of god i come against every sickness spirit tonight and i reverse it and i send it back to the pit of hell I come against every generation curse. I come against every family curse. I come against every curse that is attacking or that is a part of your life. I rebuke it. I discharge it. I dismantle it. I reverse it. I speak to it. Oh, glory to God as Jesus spoke to the fig tree to dry up from the root in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you all for tuning in. I will see you next week, Monday. And remember, tell a friend, invite someone to come on the live. Hallelujah, because we are here right through. We are here every Monday night. I want to thank all the speakers. Bless the Lord. I want to thank our minister, Pinnock, who is, you know, a part of us every time. I, I can't leave her out. I, I want to thank Minister Rowe. Oh, glory to God. I want to thank Apostle Carnegie. Oh, glory to God. Um, the Metropolitan Bishop Ray Foster and my beautiful wife who have wrapped it up. Glory to God and tell you that you need to hold on because the same Holy Ghost that came up came upon these people is the same Holy Ghost that can lead you into your blessing. Glory be to God. We must always listen to the word of God. Listen to the Holy Ghost speaking to us because when the Holy Ghost speaks to us, we will go in the right direction. Heaven bless you. Love you. We are heading out. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.
I'm born. 